Conservation Ag Update is brought to you by Yetter Farm Equipment. Hey, welcome to Conservation Ag Update. Great to have you with us as always. Well, with harvest season quickly approaching, now is the perfect time for those late summer field days. The Watershed Protection Committee of Racine County kicked off its annual event in southeast Wisconsin with a pretty interesting visual comparison between no-till and conventional tillage. Check it out. They're both the same soil, but this is because of the regenerative agriculture and the conventional that's been going on up there. This is only four years now of, of difference. So we're going to take the darker, healthier soil that we're, we're creating doing this research and compare it to the conventional, so regenerative conventional. I haven't done this yet, so hopefully this works. <laughs> well, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Well, it's starting to go now. So when we talk water quality, and I talk to these people that live on Eagle Lake, the Fox River, Tishigan, Browns Lake, they see this. That's why Eagle Lake donated some money to us. They see this, and they see Brian, what he's doing on his farm in Cora. They said, we don't want that in our lake. We want that in our lake. The nitrogen, the phosphorus, things that promote algae growth, weed growth, things that are costing these lake associations money, costing these people that live on those lakes money. They want to see this, where there's not a lot of that incorporated in the surface runoff uh, from the farm fields. Pretty cool stuff there. Perfect way to kick off the field day as attendees next got an up-close look at the test plots comparing conventional tillage to no-till and cover crops. One big observation here is it took less than a minute for a cup of water to infiltrate the no-till plot, whereas the water was still standing in the conventional plot at the end of this 45-minute presentation. Also, independent research agronomist Jim Studi shared new economic data from the two plots. Here's his big takeaway from the study so far. Our takeaway in studying the differences between conventional and regenerative is that we do have a definite transition slump in the region. We saw a yield reduction, our three year reduction in yield and income equated to almost $300 an acre, which is a huge, huge hole to dig out of. What we've also learned, and there's a lot of reasons behind it that are site specific here, like just lack of precipitation during our growing seasons. And we haven't been able to supercharge our soil biology to get them working their magic on the, the regen system. So the take home is if you're transitioning, look at using cost share programs, piggyback cost share programs for both uh, um, cover crops as well as no-till and you'll get closer. And ultimately what we're gonna recommend is maybe we need to rethink cost share instead of cost sharing programs and specific practices. Let's cost share transition and guarantee bushel between the two systems, or at least during the transition, so that um, people have a chance to transition to regen on rental ground without having an economic penalty. There you go. And Studi will explore the economic benefits of cover crops during a classroom presentation at the 2026 National No Tillage Conference. Head to notillconference.com for more information. Now let's check in with our good friend McCain Vogel, whose Baltimore Ravens destroyed my Cleveland Browns last week. McCain, what you got in the cover crop connection? Thanks, Noah. And thanks to Browns quarterback Joe Flacco. Once a Raven, always a Raven. Well, McCain Vogel here with this week's cover crop connection. Well, fall is just about here, and many no-tillers might be wondering what their best options are for no-tilling fall cover crops. Here's Tony Whisker, Vice President of Sales with Great Plains, to tell you about one new option that would be a great fit for no-tilling fall covers. 7510 is a new model for us, uh, available in 15 feet or 20 feet working width, and it transports, no matter what you're working with, it transports under 10 feet wide. So today here at the show, it's uh, displayed in that transport position. So one remote lever, you fold that out to, to your full working width, uh, it has a no-till coulter, a nice heavy machine, so any conditions, uh, it's, it's going to be able to get the job done and get the seed in the ground. The standard, uh, what you would expect from a Great Plains row unit uh, with a double disc opener with a leading edge, a no-till coulter in front of that, a variety of press wheel choices. Uh, so a, a great uh, option, whether you're 
no-tilling cover crops in the fall, uh, no-tilling your soybeans in the springtime. Um, it's a, it's a well-rounded machine, no matter what the use. The, the biggest takeaway with this machine uh, is the, the meter. So now it has the same uh, seed meter, the, the BD meter that our uh, BD7600 has. So that's something that we haven't had on the smaller size drills or on the no-till drills yet. So, so that meter has the ability uh, to meter small seeds, large seeds, uh, uh, a variety of rates. Uh, it's all controlled by the speed of the meter, uh, not, the, not necessarily the width of the opening. So uh, it meters uh, very smooth, uh, very steady, and very accurately. And as you heard Tony say, it transports at under 10 feet, a very impressive and popular feature. Well, that's all for this week's Cover Crop Connection. Until next time, I'm McCain Vogel. Back to you, Noah. Good stuff. Thank you very much, McCain. All right, the other day I paid a visit to Tanner Schaff. He's a young farmer who no-tills and strip-tills in Walnut, Illinois. And for years, Tanner was struggling with heavy residue in his system. So he invented a combine attachment called the Sharp Harvest Residue Reaper to cut through those stalks during harvest. Let's see how it works. This is a 15 inch diameter blade. Uh, it's got fins welded on the side that are, that are beveled. So the blade has about a four and a half inch wide footprint. Um, so, you know, even if you're not quite centered to the stalk when you're combining, uh, that's a wide enough footprint to consistently cut up the root balls and stalks. Um, and then these kind of act as a gauge wheel as well. Uh, they're welded two inches from the bottom of the blade. So the blade's going to go in two inches plus a little more to these fins. So you're getting a consistent depth of about two and a half to three inches. Um, so yeah, keep, just keeps that blade at a consistent, a consistent height. Um, we've noticed these also really help with flowing trash as well. It kind of helps grab the ground, uh, keeps trash flowing within the arm there. Um, so yeah, the, the whole uh, blade design really does make the product, uh, just that whole structure there. Yeah, Tanner says the tool has really sped up his residue breakdown and his fields look much healthier, especially in the winter months now. Well, if you've been to any of the farm shows lately, you've probably come across the new Green Eye Technology Kit for sprayers. We caught up with Cody Boeck, whose dealership sells the system in Exeter, Nebraska. And he says so far the technology is paying dividends for farmers who are looking to slash their inputs. Green Eye is a um, aftermarket sea and spray boom setup um, that a customer can take their current existing boom off and we'll put it on. It's got um, two different lines where we can spray residual herbicide and then we've got cameras set up to identify weeds and spot spray at the same time. So um, two different tanks, two, basically two different sprayers and one that we've got for the setup. What's fun to see as this grows is just different uh, different geographies now adopting this technology. Um, you know, every corner of the corn belt is completely different on how they manage things, what they spray with, their, their weed issues. And so uh, hearing stories about how people manage things in different corners of the corn belt and the success stories coming out of this is really fun to see. Boak Farm Outfitters was the first dealer in the U.S. actually to sell and service Green Eye technology. Continuing with the theme of input management in our video of the week, the one and only Jason Webster explains why banding fertilizer has proven to be much more efficient than broadcasting at the Precision Planting PTI Research Farm. We've been banding fertilizer at the PTI farm with the use of strip till, and we've seen that we can reduce the amount of fertilizer we're putting on since we're so efficient and being in that band right under that corn plant or soybean plant. And we've seen that we can reduce 50% of some of our applications right now. Now, some of that is We've got sufficient soil test levels in the soil. We built those up over time. We feel good about that. The other part of this is just the high cost of fertilizer where it's just not giving me the biggest bang for my buck. So I just don't, I mean, DAP right now, $900 a ton. I just don't know that that's gonna be real profitable. Our calculations, we put on 250 pounds of DAP, 250 pounds of potash. We need 50, over 50 bushel of corn just to break even. And I just, with the budgets that we're looking at today, I just don't see how that's, that's plausible. So we're strip tilling, we're banding, and I feel really comfortable that we can, you know, shave that rate of fertilizer on most soils where we've got good soil test levels in half. And I think that's some considerable savings for a farmer. Interesting stuff there. That'll do it for this episode of Conservation Ag Update. Story idea or just want to chat, you know where to find me in Newman 
at lessermedia.com. Thanks so much for watching. But hey, before we go, if you're on the fence about joining us in St. Louis for the No-Till Conference in January, No-Till Innovator Mike Starkey has this to say. If you're interested in improving your farming techniques, uh, for one thing, you hear it from your peers. You're not going to hear it from Purdue University or whatever. You're going to hear it from people that have actually done it. And for me, it's a can't miss event. With that, I always take something that's, hey, I'm going to try this, you know. Uh, not put the whole farm out there, but, you know, something I didn't even realize until I hear it from somebody else that's done it. So it's well worth the money. And it's, it's a fun getaway, obviously, also, uh, to see some old peers there and then hang out. Just kind of get away from home for a couple of days. In January, what the heck? You know, you're not going to do anything in January at, at Indiana because it's darn right cold. So, uh, great event. Uh, highly recommend it. <laughs>